We respectfully request the Sangha of great virtues for the sake of this assembly and all living beings. Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach and guide us how to end birth and death, leave suffering and attain bliss, and quickly realize non-birth. Kung tinh đại đức tặng tinh Vì thứ pháp hội cấp nhật thi khiếp chúng sanh Tình chuyến diệu pháp luân giao đạo ngã mùng như há liệu sanh thoát tư ly khổ đạt lạc tốt chứng vô sanh How much the blessed noble and perfectly enlightened one Namo Sadanto Suchedo Ye Lahudi San Miao San Puto Sye. Namo Takaka To Ya Daja Allah De Damu Dambo Da Toa. The unsurpassed, profound, subtle, and wonderful Dharma in a hundred thousand million aeons is difficult to encounter. Now that I am able to see and hear, I will receive and maintain it. I vow to fathom the thus come one's true and actual principles. Wushang sheng sheng wei miao fa bai jie wan jie Nan O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, Great Master Ching Liang, Great Master Shen Hua, O monks and nuns and all good advisors, Amitavo. Though everyone, thank you for coming. This is July the 3rd of 2022. We are gathered here to continue discussing the first chapter of the Avatamsaka Sutra. Hmm, this is uh, now, uh, this chapter is about uh, the who's who in the universe. These are the rulers of the world. These are probably most of you never heard of the names, including myself. Okay? They are too big for us. They're so way up there that we can't even, <laughs> you haven't even heard of them. Then, you know, it's like the foot soldier never having, had not having heard of the, uh, the generals. Okay. Uh, so this is a Dharma protectors, uh, uh, meaning that uh, these are very important the key players in our Dharma propagation uh, in Mahayana. In order for us to propagate, propagate the Dharma, we need a lot of support, and not just any kind of support, a port, support from these very powerful uh, living beings. And they manifest themselves as eightfold uh, Dharma protectors. Uh, what Dharma are they protecting? In general, they're protecting the Dharmas of the Buddha. Okay? Uh, so how do they protect the dharmas of the Buddhas? Their jobs uh, is to make sure that we have a chance. Number one, uh, the dharma is available in the world. 
Number two, we have a chance to practice them. Okay, so, so they safeguard, they help protect the dharmas, okay, to make it available. And furthermore, much more important, they also uh, give us uh, protection so that we can practice those dharmas. Very much like in our countries, we have the police, the firemen, the national guards, and so forth. Okay, the armed forces. Those are similar to the Dharma protectors. Without them, we cannot function. We cannot have, uh, do what we do. Okay? Um, so pay your taxes. <laughs> All right, so now we are, we are in slide number 390. Uh, that's uh, the Garuda. Uh, Garuda are the uh, golden winged punk birds. Okay? Let's get right into it. Garuda king, great oceans, power to gather and sustain. Okay. Uh, T91, commentary. This Garuda, uh, he, uh, this Garuda king here, this uh, animal here, animal king here, uh, the bird king, uh, the bird king here, can, um, uh, can gather uh, all the water that flows into the great ocean, okay? And uh, you know, great power to gather and sustain. Uh, and it, uh, it uh, also can, can, uh, can, can uh, what is it? Gather in uh, the dragons into himself, so he sucks them in like a black hole. Okay, and the, to gather and sustain. And so uh, on the surface is Garuda King, but actually uh, his uh, night jobs, right, the moonlighting, is to gather and sustain and support living beings' cultivation. Okay, I explained to you these Dharma protectors, their the job is to protect us so that we can practice. As you can see, if it uh, depends on uh, your, the Dharma you're practicing and your level, so that the protection requirements uh, vary greatly from temple to temples. For example, low levels, you don't need that very high level Garuda, uh, Dharma protectors, but for much higher level practitioners at various way places, then you have these Mahasattvas who will be available, make themselves available to protect you. Hmm? All right. 392. Garuda King, unwavering pure light. All right. So 394. This Garuda King is uh, known as unwavering pure light. Okay. So, uh, so it's, uh, the body is very, very solid and it emits a pure light, okay? Uh, what it means is that uh, this Garuda King here has tremendous wisdom, and that's why it, it emanates, radiates pure light, pure light from his purity, from this, from this, uh, uh, this uh, wisdom arising from his purity, unwavering, is uh, is solid, so it it's um, he's uh, he's uh, uh, he's helping us strengthen our resolve. So his wisdom, okay, is part of his part of his use of his wisdom is to help us uh, strengthen our resolve to cultivate. Three ninety four. Garuda King skillfully adorned crown jewel cow. Chao Yan Guan Ji Jalo Lo Wang. Hmm. 395. This particular Dhamma Protector King hmm, has a very adorned cow, the thing on top of the head, the bump on top of the head of the enlightened people. Again, only enlightened people would have a bump on the heads. Okay. It's like Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Arhats do not have bumps. Pratika Buddhas do not have bumps. 
Bum is only for the people who, you know, who have real wisdom. Uh, there's so much wisdom they need to bump the head a little, have a skull a little bit to you know, add more space for extra wisdom, if you will. All right? Yeah. And so that's why it's called by the crown cow. So it's on top of the head. Okay? Uh, and it's very adorned. Uh, adorned. Uh, he said, this is a crown cow is very adorned. So he's uh, enlightened and he teaches adornment. Okay? He inspires people by his adornments. He inspires people, make them aspire to become as adorned as he is. So you see this Garuda king, you'd be very, very impressed because it's so beautiful, noble. Yeah. Right? 396, Garuda king adroitly appearing everywhere. Okay, uh, 397, uh, commentary. This Garuda king, golden, golden winged ping bird, uh, a pung bird, uh, the, the, the king of those, uh, those uh, groups of the uh, Rambo protectors. Uh, they, Shu uh, Xian, Okay, so uh, this particular Garuda king here, uh, he can uh, appear anywhere. Uh, very rapidly. So, for example, he's here talking to us, he's here protecting us, and they say, Oh, Master Yung Hua has a temple in Kamchatka. I we don't even know where it is. <laughs> And he said, I better go over and take a look. If they need me, boom, he's there. How fast he is. Okay? That is my hope that he is, <laughs> will protect my, my way places. Yeah. Just a little bit of subtle advertising, if you will. <laughs> What's so funny about it? <laughs> okay? So he can go anywhere in this universe. Just imagine. Anywhere, from here to there, just like that. Snap a finger, finger, fing, the fingers, and you can go anywhere in the universe that fast. Huh? Huh. Three ninety-eight. Garuda king universally contemplating the oceans. Pu Guan Hai Jia Lo Lo Wang. Hmm. Now, 399, this particular Guru the King, what, what does he teach? He teach contemplating, yeah, looking at all the oceans in the universe. And that's how he cultivates. Why? Beats me. When, you, when we go to chapter 39, entering a Dharma realm, where young good wealth, young bodhisattva good wealth, you know, pretty young boy, who is told by universal, from, by, um, by Manjushri Bodhisattva to go look for good no advisors to become enlightened. So uh, Manjushri says, I want, this is where I want you to go. Uh, you go to this, uh, this uh, monk there uh, to learn how to become enlightened, meaning first ground bodhisattva, first ground level. So the boy, good wealth, uh, bodhisattva, young bodhisattva, good wealth, went to that, uh, that particular monk, uh, walked around him uh, like countless times, uh, circle ambulator around him countless times with the uh, with uh, with the incense stick, uh, okay. And when they run out, he light he would lit an uh, light another one and keep on going and going going endlessly, okay. And says, uh, uh, "Great virtuous one, please teach me. I've been referred to you by Manjushri Bodhisattva to learn from you how to become enlightened, how to reach first ground Bodhisattva." or second ground Bodhisattva, I don't remember. Uh, when we get there, we'll remember. And so, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so 
the, uh, the monk uh, then said, okay, you have good re reference, good referrals, and you are sincere, so I will teach you. So he would teach him to sit by the great ocean and contemplate the ocean. No Shuangama's mantra, no great compassion mantra, no Buddha's name to sit there and look the ocean. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah, amazing that there's a Dharma dog called contemplating the ocean and you can become enlightened. Okay? Not for us, okay? We, are, we don't have enough blessings to do that. You know, how, how expensive it is to have a property by the ocean. Oh, horribly expensive. <laughs> okay? So anyway, so this is what he does. He, he, he teaches you know, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the living beings uh, to uh, contemplate the oceans all over the universe. 400, and Garuda King, universal voice and immense eyes. Hmm. Four oh one commentary. And finally, the tenth Garuda King is by the name of universal voice and uh, broad eyes. Guang uh, Mu. Broad eyes, immense eyes. Uh, okay, so what does this Garuda king do? Uh, he may be, uh, have, may have the body of Garuda. Okay, huge, huge uh, bird uh, with the wings much bigger than the great oceans. One wing is bigger than the great ocean itself. So he can one swoop of the, up the wing, he can basically empty out the great ocean. So how powerful he is. Okay? And so he took, he took on this body of Garuda King in order to teach living beings and especially support living beings uh, uh, by Pu uh, In Guang Mu, by using uh, his immense eyes uh, to observe them, to contemplate them, and using this voice that can reach everywhere in the universe. So he doesn't have to fly over. He said he wants to talk to you, you know, and you can hear. Okay. You're not impressed. In the age of supersonic uh, 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 missiles, you're still not impressed. Yeah. 402. These and others acted as leaders of an inconceivable number of Garudas. So they are just a small sample of the countless uh, kings, Garuda kings that were gathered there uh, in the largest version of this Avatamsaka Sutra, uh, they actually list out that, that uh, the, the authentic version you know, for the Garuda kings themselves. You know how many there are? Countless Garuda kings. And that's why uh, only the Bodhisattvas have the capacity to listen to them. For us, you probably be dead just listening to if you hear you we list them they are listed one by one you probably you know, die uh, be dead already just for one king all right uh, so so they are uh, for our small version our shortest version uh, just we just listed only 10. 404 they all accomplished the power of great expedience and were universally able to rescue and gather in all sentient beings. Okay. Mm. So, how they, they became Garuda kings? Uh, their specialty uh, is to use expedience. Okay. They use a lot of expedients to help living beings uh, to rescue and gather in. 
Mm. Uh, so to rescue living beings, they use experience. And they also uh, they also uh, attract living beings and encourage them to practice, to cultivate, and walk the path. All right. And so uh, when you talk about experience, uh, the power of great experience, uh, not just experience, but also great experience. Experience is what the eighth, no, the seventh crown Bodhisattva has practiced. But great experience is what Mahasattva has practiced. Okay? And that's a little bit higher level. Okay? So that's why the, the, uh, that's how they became Garuda kings. Uh, they even used a great experience in order to take on the body of a Garuda. Okay? And then became became a king of such <laughs> bodhisattvas. And, and, uh, and so they, uh, they use a lot of great experience, uh, inconceivable experience, by the way. And what's great experience? There are the kinds of skill and means, the kinds of um, experience that we don't understand, we cannot fathom, uh, and they're also... Uh, with those skills, are able to help a tremendous amount of living beings. That's why it's called great experience. Great in the number of living beings that, are, that can benefit from it, uh, and also great in terms of the um, inconceivable nature of the experience they use that normally we cannot understand. Even bodhisattvas cannot understand. That's the truth. Okay. 405, okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, 405 commentary here. So, for example, uh, uh, Garuda, Garudas are peng, golden wing peng birds and they feed on dragons. So, we see them chase after dragons and hunt for dragons, but actually it's an expedient uh, because uh, they appear to kill those dragons and harm those dragons. Actually, uh, the dragon, by the time they, they, they eat the dragon, the dragons are supposed to die anyway. Uh, okay? So they, eat, uh, they will eat drying, dying dragons. Okay. But on the surface... Appear, it appears like they are carnivores. Huh. Yes, uh, four. Um, Master, uh, the word inconceivable and countless, um, is that the same thing as infinite? Or just uh, it just means that uh, we cannot comprehend that and we cannot count it? What's okay. Okay. Uh, what's a different... Uh, is inconceivable, that's a good question, is inconceivable infinite? Is it infinite? Uh, yes, seven. Uh, not necessarily, it just means we, we don't have the ability to count to that uh, number. But what's infinite? We can't count on a number either. No, infinite is never ending. You, clearly, is... you clearly are not a math major. You clearly are not an engineer. That's why your answer, you know, betrays you, reveals your true nature. Well, technically infinite, would you, there would be no end of number, but uh, countless, what was the word, countless, was that what you said? No, inconceivable. Inconceivable means we just can't un understand the end of it. You can't understand it to its end. So, excuse me, but what's the difference? Infinite you can't, is, I can't get to the end of infinite number, inconceivable, I can't get to the end of it either, we, so it sounds like I, the same I, thing to me. I can't get to the end of it, but maybe a bodhisattva can get to the end of an inconceivable number, and infinite, I think nobody can get to the end of that because the so number So is never infinite ends. better than inconceivable? Yeah. Because the bodhisattva can get to the inconceivable, but infinite numbers, no one can get to it. Yeah. So in, in, infinite is better. I mean, it's, it's just a number that doesn't end. It just doesn't end. Commit yourself. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Is it better or is it worse? It's, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
mm, Americans for you. <laughs> he asked them to commit. They said, no, 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 no. We are good friends. No commitment. <laughs> That's no ruin a good thing here. Anyone else? And you, anyone agrees with him? Bosco clearly agrees with him. <laughs> huh? What's the difference? Yes, seven. Thank you, Master. Um, I remember when I was little and I would see a tall person, and to me, they were inconceivably tall. How do you ever get that big? I, I can't conceive. I mean, I didn't know the word conceive, obviously. Mm. I don't get it. It doesn't exactly make sense. how I feel about him. Is how do you get up there? <laughs> Especially when you sit down and eat, and he walks by. Hey, no, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So and, and then countless, you know. Once I got past, infinite, we the question is about infinite, not, not countless. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. I was just trying to get a baseline for the two. Um, so infinite would be you just don't stop counting ever. So for a little child, that would be beyond. So which one is better again? <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, if we're putting a value statement on it, I would commit to saying infinite is far worse. Far worse. So far meaning worse. inconceivable is better. Much better. Much better. <laughs> <laughs> the American is so hard to get them to commit these. <sighs> uh, anyone in the back? Huh? Yes, number six. Master, I just have a question. Yes. Uh, what is the difference when the Chinese use the word bu si yi and bu ke si yi, where in the um, uh, bu xin heng yuan ping, they don't use the bu ke si yi, they say it bu si yi jie to jing jie. Mm -hmm. what, uh, what, when do they use that? Why do they use bu ke si yi and bu si yi when they speak about the bu xin heng yuan? It depends on a translator, the person who translated the original text. But it's the same, it's the same concept. Okay? Uh, uh, because they, uh, they, uh, the, the Tripitaka is so huge, they went through a lot of hands. And some people prefer to drop the ka. Some people want to shorten it, some people want to um, it's a matter of personal preference for the translators, so I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, anyone else? Okay. Uh, infinite means that, as was suggested, you cannot get to the end of it. The, whereas inconceivable is that you cannot comprehend it. That's all. Is that simple? So far, so good? Inconceivable is that you cannot conceive of it, meaning you cannot use your mind to imagine it even. So far, so good. Okay? You cannot possibly have put your arms around it, if you will. Okay? So is it the same as infinite? No. What's the difference? What's the difference? San Jose engineers, what's the difference for you in Northern California who are engineers and who are scientifically trained? What's the difference? They're all looking down, oh, no, I'm not an engineer. <laughs> yeah? How about non-engineers? Seven. Thank you, Master. I'll give you my English major version of, of calculus AB. Um, inconceivable means you, you just don't understand it right now. Someday you might be able to understand it, but right now you, you can't. Forget it, not for you. <laughs> and then infinite 
is only a, is only a concept. Like in calculus, you have an uh, integer that's i, and i stands for the square root of negative one, a number that can't possibly exist. So it might as well be infinite too. Clearly not engineering trained. Uh, yes, in the back six. So I would say uh, if you know something that is conceivable, if you don't know something that is not conceivable. <laughs> How funny. Okay, how about infinite? <clears throat> uh, I don't know. You only give half an answer. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, seven. Uh, well, okay, let, let me think. So, so That you think? I mean, so <laughs> you're supposed to think before I, you I, raise your hand. No, I, I can't. <laughs> how am I going to explain it? I have an idea. I know, I know what I'm going to say, but okay. So I, I can't conceive of what's going to happen today. I can't conceive of every single event of what will happen today. And so it's it, an infinite amount of things could happen by the end of the day, right? And when the day is over, I will be able to conceive of what had already happened. Does that make sense? So something inconceivable is um, it has a finite end, but something infinite doesn't. F. <laughs> yes, Daniel. Um, conceivable is like a more like a like inconceivable is something like you cannot comprehend right now. Like Apple. <laughs> <laughs> and infinite is like when we Catholics say heaven is infinite, that it has no ending or beginning. So which one is better? <laughs> oh, see, immediately put the, the phone down. You didn't notice that. I noticed immediately which one is better. <laughs> Good thinking. He's thinking on his butt. <clears throat> Anyone else? Yes, one. From Goat Forest, Daniel. Infinite is a working process and inconceivable is unattainable. Ooh, the impossible dream. Okay, how about the engineers? Any real engineer here? <sighs> okay, this is an important concept. Inconceivable is one, a word that's repeatedly used throughout this sutra. Therefore, I'm glad that somebody asked about it. In, inconceivable means that you cannot use your mind, okay, to understand. Here's what happens to us. You use your mind to understand everything, to interpret everything in life. Yes, at least I do. And some people, huh? <laughs> what are you talking about? Take a break, okay? Uh, so... This is what we do. We use our brains, our intellect, to try to size up things, try to interpret things, try to explain things to our beloved wives, okay, uh, and so forth. Um, and so that's why when we cannot use our thinking mind to understand, it's called inconceivable. Is it clear? That's the definition, inconceivable. What about infinite? Infinite is you cannot count. That number has no end. One person, two people, three, four, five, six, seven, so on, on and on and on and on. You have to keep going, okay, until you die and still have, still not enough. That's called infinite. So what's the difference? I'm glad I, yes, number six. I'm glad I studied, studied math because a lot of these questions are really uh, so, so fundamental. Arithmetic. Yes, six. Master, isn't it true that there's no such thing? No such an, thing? No such thing as an infinite number. Yes, sir. Give me one infinite number. Are you kidding me? 
You clearly are not a math person. <laughs> I just told you. Someone give me an example of a number is infinite. There's a very famous movie. Anyone? Oh, God, you are so uncultured. You don't watch movies at all. What is the matter with you? Lily, you watch movies? <laughs> yeah? Okay. Anyone? Huh? What's that famous movie? Come on, it's very recent. I haven't seen it, but I heard of the name. Huh? Juan, what is that movie? All right, tip of my tongue. One. Heidi said pi, Emily said eight. Eight? The number eight. Number eight is not infinite. Uh, police woman, I mean, this, no wonder the, the people in Chicago are in trouble. <laughs> the police stops at eight. <laughs> Too many calls. We want to reach eight, that's infinite, that's it. <laughs> Boy, are they in trouble? Hi. Hmm? 3.141529, you know, whatever. On and on and on, forever. Forever. Yes? What's another infinite number? I gave you an easy one. What about another one? Huh? Come on! It's so simple. Oh, God. Hey, you. You know, besides pi, what is an infinite number? Mm. You have two degrees. You should know this. One it's in engineering, and the other is also close to engineering. E. Huh? Number E. Number E? What's number E? <laughs> 2.8. <point eight. laughs> e, like electronic, EV? Exponential E. Exponential. <laughs> I forgot what E, what that number is. <laughs> Sorry. Give me another number. I give you at least 2,000 numbers. Jane said E. Okay, E. Okay, give me a, a third, a third infinite number. Yes. Uh, 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 see, Jane is a professor, you know. <laughs> of course. One. Miguel said 10 divided by 3 is infinite. 10 divided by 3. 4. Thank you. Um, essentially, every number is infinite. Every number is infinite. <laughs> this guy is. Uh, <laughs> go back to Colombia. <laughs> Too much. Yes, one. Yi Nguyen said one third is infinite. That's right. Anything that, uh, that has one third in it is infinite. One six is infinite, you know. Yeah, there are plenty of numbers. The infinite numbers are in, of infinite, infinite numbers. Okay, can we stop here? I don't have infinite time. <laughs> yeah, six. You have want to say something about your lack of engineering prowess? <laughs> you, you, you forgot everything, huh? Oh, good Lord. Master, when the mathematician established infinite, they actually wanted to understand it. They understand what it is. But when we talk about inconceivable, nobody can understand it. Nobody okay. can guess the problem. Okay. So the point being that infinite is about numbers. What about inconceivable? Yes, seven? It's about mind. I don't want to cry. Four. Uh, there's no measurement, like no for that. No measurements. Or they unconceivable. Are you high today or what? 
Yeah, so what? Usually, you know, by the time it gets to him, he's very close. He's like 80 percent tile or 90 percent tile. Today he's like so far off. Yes, one. News said infinite ha has to do with numbers and inconceivable half to do with thoughts. And thoughts. Who is it again? No. No. We, from now on, we classify Nu and, and Andreas to be the same group. <laughs> okay, anyone else? <laughs> if you need to compare infinite versus inconceivable, infinite is only one dimension, it's called numbers. Okay, so can an infinite number be inconceivable? No, according to the Koreans. <laughs> okay, the Koreans will say no. <clears throat> I'm get, I gotta get serious. Okay, so an infinite number is an inconceivable number, right? So inconceivable is, applies to any type of aspect that you can conceive of, that your mind conceives of, okay? So inconceivable includes infinite. One is included in the other. That's a difference. Does it help? It's a good point, by the way. Either way, it's a good question. Good question. And uh, the person who asked the question remained silent throughout. The <laughs> okay. Uh, and so what happened in the Avatamsaka Sutra, the things we explained to you, how come there's so, like, infinite number of Garuda kings? Huh? That's inconceivable. See that? Infinite number of ghost kings, infinite number of heavenly kings, infinite numbers of uh, uh, scorpions, okay? Uh, so every single aspect you can think of is inconceivable. And, in a, and so this is what's fascinating about this Flower Adornment Sutra, is that it describes you these, these inconceivable states of the universe, okay? And only Buddhas uh, can see, we can't see ourselves. Why is it important? And so what's the big deal? Buddhas can see it. So what's the big deal? It has nothing to do with us. What does it have to do with us? Hmm? Someone say, I'm trying to make a living here, man. <laughs> Why, why do you talk about you know, Buddhists and so forth, so far away from us? Huh? Why? So that you can become a Buddha, unless you hear about these things. Uh, if you hear about these things, you become a Buddha faster. You plant the seeds of Buddhahood in you, and you can carry with you wherever you go next. And someday it will sprout. That's how you become Buddhas. Make sense? Okay, so the point about this sutra here is never about understanding. It's about sitting there and mm, absorb it. Okay, just let it, let it, let it plant, let it get in, that's it, that's all. Don't worry about it. You have fun, you understand, fine. It's gravy. It's just gravy, but don't worry about it. Because whatever you understand is still, you know, a minute section of what, this, what, what we're talking about. Because we're talking about these inconceivable states. 
Is that clear? So that's why it's great that we're able to dig into this because we're learning, you're getting to habit. You listen to the, yeah, it sounds like gossip to me. Like when I listen to Xian Shun at lunch, they say, blah, blah, blah. oh yeah, it's like gossip. <laughs> okay? And, and you go in one ear and goes out the other because you have to eat. <laughs> because if you go here, listen to it, really? And you're dead. <laughs> you see that? So she, I'm using her to train me <laughs> to he, go into one ear and immediately goes out the other. And I am perfectly unperturbed. <laughs> Make sense? Same thing. When you listen, you learn the Avatar Saka Sutra. This is what's so interesting about this process. Don't try to understand. Just listen. Okay? gossip or whatever. All right. Next group, Kinara Kings. Okay. Uh, yes, number four. Um, Master, this question might be related to what we just talked about. Um, there's a thing called fractal uh, patterns. I don't know if you heard of it. I heard of cryptocurrency. No. Um, basically, fractal, fractal pattern um, shows up everywhere, basically in nature. Mm -hmm. uh, even the universe itself, there's patterns. Uh -huh. uh, the tree, the branches and the leaves, you look at it, you see, and your, even your fingerprints, you, you have it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, it's basically it's everywhere. Yes. Um, and from uh, my understanding is all around us is coming from our mind or the, the, the thoughts that creates all of it. Yes. What so? does it mean? Why, why, why is it showing up everywhere? Uh, and and in, in, in the fractal uh, pattern, it's infinite. It always repeats over and over again. So what does it mean? Why, why are we seeing it? it before, before I try to explain that to whatever the word that you use, <laughs> Are you sure you can see a pattern in everything? Well, it's a theory. It's yes, not it's proven. A it's not proven at all. That's my problem. You happen to believe these people who call themselves scientists or 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 sages, whatever, but but it's not proven that everything has a pattern. It's not true. You believe anything, everything they tell you? Because I, let, let me prove to you why it's not possible. You, you detect a pattern with your mind, yes? Yes? But your mind is limited. How can you claim that everything has a pattern? So you're making a conjecture. It's not proven. It's not something that you see it yourself or someone who's seen it. See my problem? You listen to these people who say, oh, I'm the scientist, I'm the expert, and therefore everything has a pattern. Are you kidding me? You better prove it to me. you scientists, you prove it to me. Until it's proven, it's baloney. Yes? When Einstein came up with E equals MC square, couldn't prove it, could he? And everyone laughed at him. Okay? So careful. I don't know, but I don't care to talk about it because it's not proven yet. What we tell you is not from me, from my limited, my conceivable understanding. It's from these Mahasattvas and Buddhas and Mahasattvas who have inconceivable wisdom that we don't have. That's the difference, okay? Don't confuse the two. What we're doing here is spending time to investigate what these inconceivable wisdom that we cannot fathom, 
what it's about. And, and you know, and one day, and, and I find this to be a self-imposed challenge. If I hear about this, I don't get it. I definitely intend on verifying it for myself. Okay? So to me, it's a challenge. Okay, Kenara Kings, 407. Moreover, there were countless Kinara kings. So, Kinara kings uh, they are, uh, sans is Sanskrit for non human, Feiran, questionable spirit, doubtful spirit. Okay? So, it looks human. Kinara king looks human, but uh, it really has the appearance of a human, but actually, it's not a human. You know? And uh, it is very, very doubtful as a, as a being. Xuan Zhang, a Thainese dynasty, translated this Kanara Sanskrit word as singing spirit or incense smelling spirit. Okay? They're actually bodhisattvas, uh, and they go, they are drawn to where there are parties, and they like to sing songs. Uh, and uh, they don't sing song frivolously like uh, our brothers out there. Uh, they sing songs in order to uh, awaken in sense and beings in all of us the desire to cultivate and to awaken to the way. So their music okay, are inspire us uh, to cultivate and open our wisdom. So you see, what you're witnessing here is you hear what we're learning of here are these bodhisattvas, they do things that are, they seem frivolous, that don't make sense to us at all. Remember, for the precepts. In the five precepts, you are learning about a precept called uh, mm, yu. Okay? Frivolous speech. Songs, singing songs, is a frivolous speech violation. You create, you write songs, you compose songs, you sing songs. It's a frivolous act for us professional cultivators. You really cultivate seriously. The cultivators, I'm talking about professional cultivators are the one who says, my life all now is about cultivation. I care for nothing else. Okay? I'm not here to make money. I'm not here to look for fame. Okay? I don't want to worry about money because money is dirty. Okay? Now, my mind is on sublime and noble things. The last thing I want to think about is money and profit and fame and disciples. Okay? So, so they, uh, they, they, uh, they, they, they practice and, and uh, 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 what, where was I going? <sighs> it's getting worse and worse. As soon as I know where I'm trying to go, <laughs> I forget. <laughs> That's how fast I'm dropping even my own intention. This is terrible. Hmm. So my point here, oh, thank you. So my point here is that this is Mahasattvas, okay? Kinara kings are actually Mahasattvas, and they chose to do frivolous activities such as singing songs, okay? They sing and dance, oh, uh, 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 speak of, fix of me, love, and so forth. Uh, and... Uh, what? You never heard that song before? <clears throat> and so, so they appear, they pretend to do frivolous things like singing in the process of doing that, composing music, entertaining others. I mean, in, in, on the surface, they actually are breaking precepts. 
see that? So, uh, so that's why, that's why uh, they have to appear as animals or not real people. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, my point here is that the people who with real wisdom, with great wisdom, they do things that we don't understand. It's not the way we think. In other words, is that clear? Okay, and this is this is called the middle way. By the way, when you low level, you stick to you stick to the 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 channels where it's safe for you. You won't get hurt. But once you have once you have wisdom, it's wide open. Is it clear? Until you have true wisdom, it's better. It's safer. Okay, to stay uh, in that in in the in the. Uh, uh, safe uh, domains, safe areas. Okay? Mm. 409. Specifically, they were Kinara King, Bright Heaven of Kind Wisdom. So, mm. so these Kinara beings are known. Well, let me see if they, he explains it further. Okay, the Kinara kings, they are musical spirit, music spirits. They like to sing. So what happened is that the Jade Emperor, uh, Daniel's boss, okay, uh, the, uh, uh, the, um, the uh, Christian king, the Christian god king, uh, he, uh, he, when he's bored, he lights, um, is that? Is that uh, Kinara? Incense. Yeah, so when he's bored, he wants good entertainment, he would light some incense, and the Shandani incense will go very far, and the Kinara spirit would smell it, and immediately rush to where the source of incense is, and start singing. So that's how, that's how the Christian god uh, uh, brings in orchestras, okay? The whole bunch of them come in. Okay. Mm. So this Kinara King, bright heaven of kind wisdom, mm. he helps them unfold great wisdom and obtain great brightness. Bright heaven of kind wisdom. Mm. Okay. Okay. 411, Kinara King, wonderful floral banner. So this year, this Kinara King here has a banner made of exquisite flowers. Uh, so, you know, pretty, pretty nice to look at. 413, Kinara King, assorted adornments. Ah, so uh, when you do music, you also have to do have nice adornments as well. So he uh, he's, uh, excels at, at uh, adornments. 415, Kinara King, delightful roar. Mm. So this uh, musical spirit here, uh, has a very resonant voice uh, and can be scary uh, to living beings when he wants to scare them. 417, Kinara King, brilliance of bejeweled trees. Mm. So here, this Kinara King here, uh, he has a, a Bodhi tree loaded with gems uh, that is very bright, emits a brilliant light. 419, Kinara King delighting the beholder. Mm. So this uh, uh, 420, this Kinara King here, uh, uh, whenever living beings get to see him, catch a glimpse of him, uh, uh, they give rise to uh, delight uh, and, uh, and they're happy, they're pleased, they're very pleased. So 
is not simply appearance, but uh, when they are able to see uh, this Kinara king inside their heart, okay, they give rise to sinla, uh, sinla. They give rise to admiration and uh, uh, pleasantness. Okay, so it doesn't matter. This Kinara king could be a thousand years old. The skin is so, you know, so uh, has many, so many age spots. But uh, it's still, it's still, people take a look at the Tiskinara king and they give rise to admiration and happy in their hearts. Okay? Hmm. 421. Kinara king adornment with supreme light. Guang Zhuang Yan Jing Na Luo Wang. For twenty-two, uh, this Chen uh, Song Yan, the this uh, the use is light. It's a very bright light to adorn uh, wherever he goes. Okay. For twenty-three, Kinara King exquisite flower banner. Wei Miao Hua Chuang Jing Na Luo Wang. So for twenty-four. So a common thing about these kings, in order to adorn, they use a lot of flowers, but not just any flowers, the flowers this Kinara king uses, okay, uh, in his uh, banner are very subtle, very inconceivable, very exquisite. 425, Kinara king earth-shaking power. Dong Di Li Jing Na Luo Wang. Hmm. So this Kinara king here, uh, he can make the earth quake uh, whenever he moves, if he chooses to. He doesn't always uh, make the earth quake, but when he chooses to, he said, and the earth will quake. And Kinara king gathering in and subduing evil multitudes. Okay, 120, 428. Hmm. So uh, he gathers in, he draws in this particular Kinara king, uh, attack, attracts, draws in uh, the evils, the evil multitude, meaning all sorts of evil living beings whether it's demons, all sorts of demons, all sorts of ghosts, all sorts of troublemakers, all sorts of externalists with the evil mind, he gathers him in, he draws him in, he's able to attract them, okay? So probably he comes across to them pretty evil himself after they're drawn to him. Hmm? And... And he's probably, most likely, he's extremely evil. That's why the non-extreme evil are drawn to the extreme evil. Does it make sense? No? Yeah, that's, what, that's how it happens. Because when you're evil, you say, Oh, he's so evil! I love it! Bosco, help me out. Agree or disagree? Bosco, it's the day's ah, it's my day off. Yeah, it's my day off. <laughs> so is uh, so, Master? Are you saying that uh, uh, Kinara King is also the uh, the CEO of evil? Yeah. Wow. Evil, I N C. So wow. evil Inc. Wow. Mm. Chairman and CEO. And this is what you don't realize that because you haven't dealt with that many evil people. The only thing that attracts evil people really is actually more evil. They say, ah, how come I didn't think of how to be that evil before? This is fascinating. Teach me. Hmm? Okay, so anyway, so he has experience to gather in these beings, and I'm telling you, that's evil. That's what draws these people. And then, because 
because he got in, he gets in these evils because they they are impressed, they like it, and then once they inside, they are subdued. He overpowers them. It overpowers the evil, and that's how he works. That's how he crosses over living beings. You see. Normal people, you say, oh, you evil, I want to kill you, I want to shoot you. I want to, you know, eradicate from you from the surface of the earth. No, these people, come, come here, go to my impure land. <laughs> okay, let's have party together. Okay, and then once you get there, they subdue. They say, oh, wow, what's a big deal? Evil is nothing. Huh? So... So, so they, uh, that's how he crosses over the evil multitude, okay? All sorts of evil human beings, evil demons, evil ghosts, evil uh, asuras, evil, 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 evil can evil. Yes, four. Thank you, Master. I think like the the those evil beings they are attracted to pureness to because they want to co corrupt or corrupt. No 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 no. When you evil, that's a different. When you evil, uh, uh, your heart may like the pureness, may like the goodness. Okay, but you're not drawn to them. You go near them to destroy them. Okay, so so you cannot you cannot draw them that way. Typically, the better way is to be more evil than they are. You say, "Come, I teach you. Let's talk about evil." <laughs> okay, and they say, "Wow, how come I didn't know about this kind of evil before?" Does it make sense? Hmm. And this is how I would do it. Okay, 429. These and others acted as leaders of a countless number of kinaras. Okay, countless of them and the leaders of countless leaders. 431. And they all diligently and vigorously contemplated all dharmas. Their minds were always happy, playful, and free. Okay, so what is... Uh, their methods of practice, how do they cultivate, okay? Uh, they contemplated all dharmas vigorously and diligently. Okay, uh, they, they are very hard working and, and, and they contemplate all dharmas, meaning that they don't reject anything. They look at everything. So they, in other words, at their level, they look at every single thing that happen, they see as what? A learning experience. The thousand things speak Dharma. They don't need a teacher to tell them what is a Dharma anymore. See, at your level, we keep on stressing to you, look for a good, no advisor, okay? At their, when they get to their level, Kinara kings, at these particular Kinara kings, uh, no one has time to teach them anymore, <laughs> okay? Because they can look at, you know, and it, ah, and they develop wisdom from looking at, you know, Qin Xiang, at a German uh, floor, uh, fan, pillars, whatever, the 10,000 things, they look at them and say, ah, oh, oh, wow, how wonderful. Is that clear? There's a difference. 
Again, it's a middle way. When you're low level, you better look for a good new advisor. And then when you get reach a certain level, you say, okay, <laughs> okay, now I have to be on my own because that's how I have to become, do to become a good new advisor myself. So that when you become a good new advisor, you look at that, ah, ah, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's why, that's why. Yes. Four. Um, Master, these um, great spirits, they, they go everywhere in the universe, correct? Mm -hmm. they, they, they exist in the universe, so that means they can go anywhere in the universe to help uh, living beings. Oh, they have, they have a range. Yes, for the, these Mahasattvas, their range is the entire universe. You're absolutely right. So that means the universe is filled with living beings. Yes. Uh, remember, all oh, dharmas, meaning they have to go everywhere. They're able to go everywhere. Yeah, but okay. <laughs> because a scientist is looking for <laughs> life in the universe, and this is telling us it's everywhere, basically. It's everywhere. It's more than the scientists can conceive of. Yes, six. Master, I'm getting out of this uh, that uh, Canara kings, if they're not human, they're not of human essence. Uh, it sounds to me like it's being described as an entity other than human, like as a comparison, I'd say, in uh, Christianity, Moses talking to the burning bush. So the burning bush is a phenomenon that can communicate with humans, but it's not human. Is, is, could this be similar to what that is? Actually, the way that uh, Master Shihua describes them is that they have a human body. Oh, because I thought at the beginning it said they were non-human. Right. They have a human body appearance. However, on the top of the head, okay, it's got the... there's a horn. Yeah. Ooh. Not unicorn. Ooh. It's a horn. Okay. Ooh. A little bit small horn. So that you get, that's why they say it looks exactly like a human except for that horn right there. That's why uh, they call non-human. Okay? Yeah. For example, uh, they would say, don't call me Jay-Z because I sing so well. Okay? Uh, because, so the horn says, I'm not, I'm not a human. So far, so good. And the horn there uh, is because the nature is also very, very doubtful. Whatever you tell them, you know, I don't know. Sounds familiar? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about this. The difference, that's the difference between Kinara and Sienchen. Sienchen believes everything you tell her. And she quote, and she sent me these links, and you know, of uh, these greater discoveries in the universe. I said, "Oh, please." And I, you know, oh, uh, that's how, that's how I said, "I'm in a prior life, I probably was Kinara." Uh, yes, four. Thank you, Master. I find this fascinating because, for me, I want to be. But, you know, like, I don't want to be with ghosts or evil or anything. But when the Buddhas speak, it's all kind of living beings. And, all kinds of living beings. And we understand that everything is, you know, like, there could you be don't like reject a ghost, anything. And it could be like experience for you. You, so. you, may be, you may be seeing a being doing something incredibly evil, incredibly cruel, okay? Like this morning, we talked about this Yama king. How can a ya king Yama, king Yama, be so cruel to good people? And actually, he's a bodhisattva. You see, and that's a state that's called inconceivable. We don't understand. So, so the lesson we learn from it is stop, stop trying to understand, stop trying to judge people. None your damn business. Look at your own problems. Hmm? 
Hmm? And someday you understand. Does it make sense now? You know, you guys keep on looking outside. You say, oh, I have a theory about why people are so crazy. A theory about why there's a pattern and everything. It's nonsense. Those people who are like that, by the way, when I hear that, immediately I say, oh, they have no wisdom whatsoever. Okay? Because you spend your entire life looking outside, okay? You will never open real wisdom. You will never be happy. When are we going to learn this? When are you going to learn this? How much longer do I have to repeat myself? You look outside, look at others, you never be happy. Never, ever, till the end of time. Never. The only way for you to be happy is look inside. So whatever people do outside doesn't matter. You are, you know, you are whoever you are, whatever you do, you're evil, you're God, it doesn't matter. Not your business. It doesn't make sense to you. It doesn't have to make sense to you. Okay? This is what happens to the people who are educated, who are smart. They said, I can explain this. Sounds familiar? I used to have people who say, don't worry, boss, I can explain this. I said, oh, yeah? I give you 1.5 seconds. And you cross over 1.5 seconds, I throw you out. Get out. You cannot solve this problem. You don't get it. Now I give the old monk two sentences, and he complains. <laughs> He says, that's not enough. I need half an hour. <laughs> it's not the way you think. That's what's so fascinating about the nature of the wisdom. You keep on looking outside. That's why you never be able to develop your wisdom. You say, oh, so-and-so says so. So-and-so says so. No. You have all the wisdom there is. And the way to wield the wisdom is by looking inside, not, not by looking outside. Just remember that. When you call stupid, it's because you keep on looking outside. When are you going to wake up? Hmm? I'm very pleased. Recently, for example, I'm so... I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah. I, I got to brag about this. Can I? What the hell? Huh? <laughs> this week, you know, someone texted me and said, Master, it's some Korean guy who wants to publish uh, so uh, soju, or is it soju? I don't remember, it's booze, okay. <laughs> booze is drawings. Oh, she, she is, her drawings are tremendous. It's, they steal her drawings. They use it everywhere in Korea. I use it. <laughs> so this guy had been so impressed. He says, she... They contacted him, and he contacted her and said, I'd like to do a book on your drawings, your artwork. Yes? She's famous, by the way, in Korea. She put on her own ex exhibit and makes money. I can't think why would anyone want to pay to go in and look at her, you know. <laughs> but they do in Korea. It's so weird. So this guy here, Who's been saw who who's aware of her artwork and said, I want to, you know, do a book on your art. And so he contacted her. And of course, being a good disciple of mine, ding. <laughs> he says, Well, let me check with my master. She called me. So she called, and so I always contacted her and said, Is it okay for her to do a book? I said, Of course, go ahead, go ahead. Okay? Yeah. And, and then I got down on my knees and said, Oh Lord, 
please help her. <laughs> Make the right choice. Because, and then, you know, look within, within like 12 hours, yeah, I heard from her. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. I want to concentrate on my cultivation. Ah, oh, I was going, oh, good girl. <laughs> because why do I pray to God? I pray to God because, honestly, I was Please, Lord. Uh, oh, Father uh, in heaven. <laughs> Thou art heaven in heaven. <laughs> Who art in heaven? Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hallowed be thy will. <laughs> Them will. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've, been, I've been practicing this for at least 20 times. I still can't, I can't remember. <laughs> so anyway, I said, Oh, oh, dear Lord, you know, please help her. Because if I said no, she said, oh, Master's jealous of my success. Right? I mean, he's tried to repress me because he's afraid that, you know, I become famous, more famous than he is, and then I leave, and, you know, and so forth. And, you know, he lose someone to, to man his uh, audio video console. So I said, oh, go, 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 please, yeah. So, but I didn't mean it, you know. I was <laughs> yes, I'm known to lie. <laughs> so after you lie, what do you do? You pray to God. <laughs> Help. <laughs> it's nice because... Uh, because, uh, because I, when I told I one side, I said, you know, go ahead and explore it, go for it, you know, if, it, uh, if that's important, it, you know, it's uh, a good thing to do, go for it. Uh, but on the other hand, I said, oh my God, it such, would be such a waste of time. Okay, so monks and nuns are special animals. We are supposed, we shave our head, Wear, uh, wear strange clothes, cheap shoes, sandals, and so forth, so that we can distance ourselves from worldly things. Like? Like? Huh? Worldly pursuits. Okay? So, meaning that if your mind is to you spend your time on pursuing things that are worldly, meaning it has really no impact on your cultivation, Okay, not very helpful towards your becoming enlightened because that's our goal. It's a waste of time. See that? Uh, so I'm so pleased that she decided to continue to do audio video. <laughs> <laughs> so There's some wisdom somewhere, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Hmm. Okay? Cheap labor. <laughs> <laughs> so all the special things I've been, you know, uh, investing in her is coming to fruition slowly. Huh? Yeah. Very good. Keep it up. Don't make me pray to God again. <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> When, you know, I can't even remember the, the proper prayers. No wonder it doesn't work. But this time it worked. <laughs> okay. So they diligently and vigorously contemplated all dharmas. Okay. So very high level, contemplating dharmas. Their minds are always happy, playful, and free. And when they cultivate, it's not like us, where we struggle and say, oh my God, this is so painful, my, you know, my hips, or my back, you know, I need more sleep, uh, would be nice to uh, uh, eat more, you know. uh, would be nice, the master is nicer to me. <laughs> Why does he work so hard? He's always a scowl on his face every time he looks at me. He's never kind to me when he talks to me. Uh, uh, 
In contrast, these Ginara kings, they're always happy, okay, playful, okay, very playful, entertaining, and free, zizai, not free, at ease. Could you change it, please? It's not free. Zizai is have self-mastery. Could you, please? It's not free at all. It's nothing about freedom. Is that they, self-mastery means that they are themselves wherever they, they, they go. Whoever they're with, they are themselves. They don't need to put on a show. They don't need to, you know, put the guards up and say, oh, don't hurt me, don't hurt me. Okay? Don't try to steal from me. Okay? They need to defend themselves. Self-mastery, no tension. You want to hit me? Hit me. You want to kiss my feet? Go ahead. Oh, I should wash my feet first. Okay? So that's called self-mastery. No fixing. And is self-mastery close enough? Okay. Yeah. Let's not be too picky. Yeah. Okay. So far so good? Okay, very good. 433. Uh, we revisit, uh, revisit these things as we learn more about them. Uh, next group are called Mahoraga Kings. They are pythons. Hmm. Okay. Moreover, there were countless Mahoraga Kings. Uh, Mahora, Mahoraga kings. Mahoraga, I don't know. Look up how you pronounce this. Uh, I don't think they have it. Uh, means uh, in the commentary in slide 435, great crawlers on bellies. Actually, they are huge pythons, the humongous pythons. Okay? Uh, 436. Um, Specifically, they were Maharaga King Kind Wisdom. So we shall hear more. 437. Uh, this uh, has uh, wisdom uh, that, uh, that comes across as kindness. Kind people. Okay? Uh, this is one thing that uh, I notice uh, that uh, children are drawn to kindness. They're not drawn to smarts, by the way. I saw, you know, two people, a lady is very smart, very factual, very efficient, very professional, versus a lady, also e equally educated or even more, but, but she's kind. And I saw how children are drawn to the kind lady and kind of stay away from the, the smart lady and, and uh, intellectual lady and, 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 uh, and uh, professional lady. It's interesting. So my lesson, my, what I learned is that kindness is so attractive. Kindness attracts, not about being right. Okay? Yeah. That especially your mother, and you, you, you're so scared that you're, you're, so in, you're so preoccupied with protecting your children and, and uh, doing a good job as a mother. Uh, it's a wrong attitude because that energy okay, is unattractive to children. When you like that, the children are like this immediately. Okay. Whereas I saw, I saw that you know that that you know, the two people, one you remember, the one lady is very smart, very practical, pragmatic, you know. Whereas the other person is kinder and gentle. Oh, the children love the people love the kind lady versus they try to stay away from the other one. Okay, that's the. Advantages of kindness. 438. 
Maharaja King, clear, majestic voice. 清净为迎摩侯罗切王 Qingqing is clear? I thought Qingqing is pure. Okay, uh, change it, it's not clear. Yeah. It's a voice that came from purity, it's not about clear voice. And see, these people, they don't understand uh, how these things came about, how this person became Ma Maharaja King. It's from purity, Okay, and the purity, uh, and he has, uh, he chooses to be majestic to create a very uh, more imposing, become more imposing so that they save time. Okay? But it all arises from purity. It's nothing about pure, I mean, it's not about clear of the sound at all, it's about purity. The majest, the the the, the, ma, the um, majesty. What's the word? For, what's the noun for majestic? Majesty, <laughs> huh? The majesty. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, your majesty. I'm so sorry. I forgot. Yeah. Uh, oh. Majesty. Majestic. No, that's okay. Don't don't change it. I didn't ask you to change. Huh? Pure, majestic voice. Okay, so uh, so majestic voice here. Okay, uh, is he this Maharaja king chooses to uh, be authoritative to save time. Okay. Uh, so, for example, the two ladies I'm talking about, if the other professional intellectual lady is more authoritative and the other person is more uh, a kinder, more effusive, effusive and more friendly. I said that's two, two diff different approaches, if you will. So the majestic here is you, you impose your will okay, on others. Okay? And, but that's come from the purity, yeah. that voice, the voice of the, 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 the majesty is from the purity. Questions, comments? All right. Hmm. This is clear, you have to change this. Uh, the, the has nothing, has nothing to do with the clarity at all. Okay, of the sound. Hmm. 440. Maharaja King Supreme Wisdom and Ornamented Top Knot. Hmm. So, this particular Maharaja King, okay, hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. Has a kind of wisdom that will help uh, him prevail over his opponents. Any opposition he has, he will overcome them. Okay, that's why it's called Shang Supreme. You will, he will defeat uh, the wisdom that will be able to defeat any opposition, any obstructions. Okay. And he is also very, very adorned. Top knot, the bump on the head. So far, so good. So now we have these beings that use wisdom to fight, to prevail over others. And that's how it works. You win from wisdom. You prevail over by wisdom, not by force. Okay? Hmm. 442 Ma, uh, Maharaja King Lord Wondrous Eyes hmm. So this has beautiful eyes okay, probably has nice eyelashes 
two. Okay, uh, and uh, and it's a lord, so he's he's uh, he's uh, of uh, nobility. Okay. Uh, Four forty four Maharaga King lamp like banner that multitudes rely upon. Okay, so uh, the, he's emits light in the shape of banner. Okay, and uh, living beings would uh, are drawn to that light, uh, and they take refuge with uh, uh, with him. Get to get protection from him. Four forty six Maharaga King Supreme Light Banner. Uh, Supreme Light. Uh, we embrace. Okay. So this uh, four forty seven has a banner radiating uh, uh, unrivaled brightness. Okay. Maharaga King Lion Chest. Ah, how do you have a lion chest? Ah, Susan is here. They are getting ready for the uh, rebirth transference. Look at that. Oh my God, the whole family. Ah, okay, so it's a. Uh, it has a uh, lion refers to the lack of fear, the fearlessness, uh, uh, and the chess is uh, uh, means that this uh, Maharaga king actually does a lot of weightlifting. That's why the chess is bigger. Okay, uh, any questions? And well, the Chinese explain it differently. I like to explain it in terms of weightlifting, strength training. It works. Four fifty, Maharaga, 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 King, sound of many wondrous adornments. Mm. And this particular python. Uh, big python here, gigantic python, uh, has uh, many, uh, many, is bedecked with, with all sorts of, uh, of gems. And uh, it has, okay, uh, and has very, very, uh, very beautiful voice. 452, Mahoraga king, solid as Sumeru. Mm. So, uh, Mount Sumeru in Buddhism is the, uh, the biggest mountain in our world. Each world has, a, at the center, each world has something called Mount, Mount Sumeru. Uh, that is 42,000 yojanas tall across, and then also... Uh, 42,000 yojanas tall, okay? It's huge, okay? Uh, your one yojana is like um, uh, 80 miles, okay? And so, so it, it's a, it's some Mount Sumeru uh, is at the center of our world, and then we live around, people live around it. And at the top of Mount Sumeru, that's where the God King lives. That's why his palace is are okay uh, and so it says here Mount Sumeru is uh, is considered to be solid uh, meaning that uh, Mount Sumeru is a manifestation of our egos our egos are indestructible in our world extremely difficult to destroy our egos our egos are extremely sturdy, extremely solid. Try you want, try you you may, but it's virtually impossible to destroy our egos. 
Okay, uh, so so he manifests as as a, a very very strong and hard like a mountain. Hmm? His strength. Uh, one four fifty four and Mahoraga King adorable brightness. 可愛耀光明, hmm. What does it mean? It means that this particular big python, okay, has uh, emits a light that is so adorable. People look at the light, okay, and the light, whoever uh, the light uh, is shined upon by this light here, they give rise to uh, liking, a uh, mind of liking. Hmm. Okay, they adore his light, his brightness. 456. These and others acted as leaders of a countless number of Mahoragas. Mm -hmm. Commentary. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, Okay, and never mind. This is a wrong commentary. So this is uh, uh, they listed only ten of these uh, countless number of uh, leaders in this universe in the Dharma realm, uh, and how they got there. Four fifty eight. They all diligently cultivated vast great expedients, causing sentient beings to rend forever the net of delusion. 接勤休息,广大方便,令诸众生,勇哥吃网。Ren, is that, is that a, a word? Huh? Ren? I never, I never heard of that word. Ren. Go is a cut. Okay, is there such a word, rend? What does it do? What's the meaning of rend? <clears throat> yes, eight. It says to tear, to tear into two or more pieces. Okay. Well, those nets, okay? The wang here is the net. Okay, so you cut one after another. Okay, so that's why you use, I'm not sure rend is the proper word. Uh, but anyway, I only uh, cut through barbed wires and never a net, so I never use this word. My war era. Don't look at me like that. Before your time. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, how did they become rulers of the world? Okay, uh, they are very diligent. Okay, in their practices, their spiritual practices, and they what did they practice? Vast and great expedient. They use a lot of uh, skill and means, expedients. They pretend to do things, but it's not like that. Okay? Uh, causing sentient beings to, uh, to destroy, cut the net of delusion. It's delusion like a net, okay? They're structured like a net. So you cut one, and you cut one more, one more, one more, one more. That's how you destroy delusion. Okay? Uh, yes, one. Jane said, Ren is better changed to cut or sever. Sever? I want, I want a verb that says, you know, a net is like uh, the small has holes in the center, and next hole, so, they, you know, they're, they are, they are, uh, they are, uh, 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 you know, knit it together, you will, and you cut one, and you cut next, and next, and next, and next, and next. Okay, that's the concept behind it.
this is a process. You cannot simply cut one and pull it. No, they said, cut here, cut here, cut here, cut here. That's there. That's how they cultivate. You have to cut. That's the emphasis. You cut the net. You don't cut one and you pull. You cut one and you pull. No, you cut, 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 cut. It's very precise. The instruction is very precise. This is how they became great leaders in our, in our universe. Okay? It's hard work. Cut, 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 cut. Hmm. The net of delusion. Delusion, your confusion, your stupidity, your ignorance, okay? It's like a net. It's, we, it's woven together. They are interconnected. Okay, yes, one way to destroy that is a cut and then pull. Okay? But here, he says, it's better to cut and cut and cut and cut. That's a tip. Don't try to pull. Cut and cut and cut. Subtle, subtle T in the instructions. Okay? Yeah. It's much more efficient for us when we're confused, when we're deluded, to cut, 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 cut. All right, so uh, they use all sorts of tricks, all sorts of skill and means to help us to cut and destroy our delusions in a, that, that is like a net. So far, so good? Hmm. Okay, 12 more minutes. 460, the next group of protectors that uh, are invisibly working hard to assist us in our spiritual lives is Yaksha kings. Yaksha kings. Yaksha, not Yasha. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, moreover, there were countless yaksha kings. Okay. Uh, for you uh, who are not uh, uh, very uh, familiar with uh, Buddhism here, and we're talking about yakshas are real. These beings here are called uh, the real ghosts that uh, uh, actually are here in Rosemead. Uh, <laughs> yes, in Rosemead, we have a lot of them. Our temple has tremendous amount of yakshas, too. Okay? Uh, and uh, they are yaksha kings. What are yakshas? Yakshas are uh, hideous looking ghosts. Uh, they're proud of to be so ugly. They look at themselves in the mirror. Oh, I love myself. I'm so ugly. <laughs> so instead of combing their hair, what they do? <laughs> like the prime minister of <laughs> England. <laughs> huh? Uh, so because he likes to be ugly too. Probably some sort of connection. Okay, uh, so all those uh, ghosts are called yaksha ghosts, okay, and they're different kinds. They're earth traveling, the space traveling, and yakshas in the heavens. They live in the heavens, okay? Earth traveling meaning that they, they hear and they, they go very fast. They're faster than uh, hypersonic uh, things. Uh, no, 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 not hypersonic. Then what's the fastest car? Bullet trains are like 200 
miles. Huh? Huh? But the yaksha goes even faster. They, 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 they run very fast. You will, they're fast road runners. You don't watch cartoons, huh? Children? No? Okay. Mm. So earth traveling meaning they travel very fast. So there's, they surf like the Pony Express, you will. They, they transmit news very, very fast. Okay? Space traveling, they're even faster than supersonic, hypersonic uh, missiles. Okay? They travel very fast or they live in heavens. They go and live in heavens. Go figure. You think that only the gods and live in the heavens? They also ghosts in heavens. Like the ghosts here in oh, Way Mountain Temple. Tell them. Okay? And space traveling yaksha is a wing, uh, and they transform themselves like transformers. There's some time to become red transformers. Uh, black transformers, yellow transformers. Uh, what's the name of that? Apollo? Uh, uh. Optimus. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> He's my man. He's my kind of man. <laughs> Optimus. Huh? Prime. Yeah, Prime. Optimus. You know what I'm talking about, huh? Ah, oh, yes, yeah. You don't let them watch movies at all? <laughs> Scooby-Doo, is that all you would let them watch? Roadrunner, that's it? Hey, keep up with the times. Transformers, okay? <laughs> we are very cultural temple children, very cultural. <laughs> uh, and because they're ghosts, the nature of ghosts is that uh, you will, they have a dark energy. You open your spiritual eye, you see a, a dark, they envelop an aura of dark energy. Okay? And what does it mean to you, especially children, when their children are near the ghost, they become fearful, they become scared. They're frightened. That's why, if you don't believe me, bring them to a funeral home. And they that's a leave. Let's get out of here. Go have some ice cream. They'd rather not hang around places like funeral homes, cemeteries, stuff like that. Because the children are very sensitive. They can sense the dark energy. And that's why they're fearful. They're scared. Okay? When they reach about the age of, uh, of uh, graduating from college, <laughs> Then they're no longer sensitive, you know. Bring them on. They say, ghosts or gods, I don't care. I'm happy. <laughs> I don't believe that you exist. Uh, yes, Christian. I mean, Catholic. Six. Um, when I was a child, I used to like um, funerals and I used to like um, um, uh, cemeteries too. And look at what you become. <clears throat> uh, and uh, in talking about ghost stories, can I interest you children about some ghost stories? <laughs> some of you might see it, okay? And, and, and if you see it, then remember, I told you, you learned it from Wave Mountain Temple today. Okay? Some of you children can see ghosts. Okay? There's some ghosts here at the temple, you see. They're big, as big as a gorilla. Okay? And so you see this black energy and in the shape of a gorilla, okay? And with two eyes. Red eyes. Have you seen them, children? Anyone? Someone support me, lie or something, I don't care. <laughs> huh? 
Don't be scared. Okay, they're around. Yeah. Don't be scared. Yeah. And and uh, the ghosts actually have different shapes. There are many many forms. They can have uh, elephant shapes. They can have uh, monkey uh, shapes and human shapes and you know very scary. A uh, uh, zombie, like, I think, is in that right, uh, Bosco, Doctor Bosco. In your profession, you have a lot of ghosts at your office. Crazy ghosts. Hmm. Okay, for sixty-three, a few more minutes. Uh, so the yakshas. Ghosts are the ghosts that terrorize you. You see yakshas, you pass out because you're so ugly, you're so hideous that you're so frightened that you pass out. Okay? Uh, and that's why they appear horrifying shapes to scare living beings. Okay? And I like to tell the story that happened that my uncle who died already, so he can't back me up now. <laughs> He became a ghost himself. <laughs> he says he used to take us to the, 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 uh, the beach in Vietnam at night. And we love it because it's a family gathering, so we had nothing to do. It's hot, you know, as hot as today. So we hang out at night, at a, go to the beach, went to the beach. And you lie on the beach and look in the sky. It's so starry, it's all black. No light in Vietnam, no street lights. In my time. <laughs> and so you can see the sky. The sky is so black and you see all kinds of, of uh, stars. If you kids go out at night here, at mom's home, at dad's home, you see no stars, right? Because there's a light around you with too many lights. Car lights, street lights. Uh, firework lights, huh? So anyway, so we went there, and so my uncle, well, my uncle would tell us ghost stories. I, I still remember this story I, because I I was fascinated by it. He says, "There's a man in central Vietnam who is very brave. He's fearless. He says, ghosts. I don't believe in ghosts." Okay, and remember at the time. At night, there's no street light, remember? So that's why if you go out at night, it's so dark. You can't see anything. So back then, you don't have a Honda or a Yamaha or a Vespa. You ride on a bike, okay? Anyone remembers? Am I the only one here? <laughs> Seriously? Young Sung, help me. Okay, so, so this, he said, at night, when it's dark, that's when you're a lot of ghosts. Okay, so there's a, there's a young man here who's, who, who, who hears of those stories, ghost stories, and says, I don't believe them. He says, I'm not afraid of ghosts. To make a point, he says, I will tell you, I will ride my bike at night. Okay, by myself. So... So he, he rode his bike out on the street, totally dark, okay, by himself. And you know, we knew better. That's dark, you don't want to go out. No light, are you crazy? Uh, so he rode his bike, and the only light he had was back then, there's a bike, uh, the, all the bicycles had a little light that when the wheels turn, uh, it generate power for that teeny tiny little, uh, light, you know, you can't even see anything, okay? But he, he was riding his bike, and then, lo and behold, he saw a girl, okay? This is a, the, the uh, uh, not children rated, uh, <laughs> but it's okay, okay? You can listen. <laughs> I will just cut out the other part. <laughs> and, and so, he saw his lady and said, hey, honey, what are you doing by yourself? Okay? He said, oh, I got lost. 
So that young man says, don't worry, I will help you. I will bring you home. And you know, back then, there are two kinds of bikes, male bike and female bike. You know what I'm talking about? Male bike, you have, you have a bar, okay? And female bike, you have no bar. Makes sense, right? So this man here is riding a male bike, and, back, uh, and there's no back seat. So he says, hop on my bike, and I will ride you home. I will give you a ride home. So the lady, very pretty lady, okay, uh, you know pretty, right? Uh, and, and she sat on the bike, and the guy was riding happily. And, say, and they started talking. And said, he said, why are you here by yourself? She said, oh, I, 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 I'm, I, I need to go to my aunt's house. It's not that far from here. And then she asked him, why, why do you come out tonight? It's kind of dark. He says, oh, I had a bet with my, with my friends. That I'm not afraid of ghosts. There's no ghosts. I would not find any ghosts. Okay? <laughs> as soon as he said that, she, said, and she had this strange laugh. So, <laughs> <laughs> and he says, really? Do you really believe that? He says, oh, yeah, I'm not afraid of ghosts. And she says, look at me, honey. And she turned, look at me, look at him. And her face turned from a beautiful, beautiful face, like uh, Miss USA, Miss California. Okay. Uh, it turned into a hideous-looking woman. And the guy Look at the face, he was frightened out of his wits, he passed out. <laughs> he passed out right there, on the street. <laughs> and he never dare go out at night again. <laughs> never mind, that's the end of today's lecture. Thank you children for coming. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sure to go.